This video is brought to you by OutWest Officials. Visit outwestofficials.com for all your equipment needs. We're going to talk about two things, an infield fly that you're going to see momentarily and game management. Let's get to the infield fly. And that's another fly ball that went over the head of the second baseman, Zhang Zixian. And now we have a bases loaded situation for the monkeys. I think they're discussing whether or not they should have called an infield fly rule on that play. Because, um... Stop right there. What is an infield fly? A fair ball not including a line drive nor attempted bunt, which can be caught by an infielder with ordinary effort when first and second or first, second, and third bases are occupied before two are out. So there we have the ball, we have the fielder. Is this an infield fly? The three criteria are at the bottom of the image I just put up, color-coded. The first one is first and second base occupied with less than two outs. Yep, we have that. Is this a fair fly ball, a ball hit into the air, which is not a line drive nor a bunt? A little iffy, so stick a pin in that because number three, criterion three, will answer the question for us. In the umpire's judgment, can this be caught by an infielder, i.e. the second baseman, employing ordinary effort, which would be the average skill of someone at his position in this league, the CPBL? We're going to roll the video. Can this be caught by the second baseman employing ordinary effort? No, it's way over his head, so this is not an infield fly. Fine, we made the incorrect call. The important thing is, now what do we do? Oh, wow! They called an infield fly. Wow. Oh, I would be very mad if I'm on the monkey side. If, if you are the Atlanta Braves, you would be throwing trash onto the baseball field as you did in that NL wildcard. Speaking of which, here is that NL wildcard game. You see so many differences with the CPBL play. For one, this is an actual fly ball. Look how high it's hit as opposed to this line drive thing in the CPBL. The fielder has ample time to get where he needs to go, ordinary effort. The fact that he goes forward and decides not to play, it has nothing to do with ordinary effort. And finally, the timing of the call. As you see, Sam Holbrook, the left field umpire. The rule says the umpire should call it when it seems apparent that a batted ball will be an infield fly. There is no time limit. You don't have to call it at the apex. You don't have, it, the good practice is to call it at the apex or later. But you can call it when the ball hits the ground. There is no procedure against that. When it seems apparent that a batted ball will be an infield fly, you call it, even if it's late. In this situation, as with the CPBL, you see the third base umpire, Jeff Nelson, mirroring the call. That's exactly what our first base umpire in the CPBL did. So the call itself, notwithstanding, the timing was proper. The mechanics for the timing were proper in the CPBL play, even if the call itself was not. Water bottle coming in from behind home plate. Well, that fan's got to be thrown out for sure. I assume the manager's talking to the crew chief, Tim McClatt, I mean the crew chief. So that's fine. He's now going to the rest of the crew trying to get to the calling umpire, which is fine. It tells me the calling umpire might be a young guy because they're not letting him get to the calling umpire. But at the same time, you do want to handle your, your own business. But we're going to see an issue a little bit later on in this video of what happens when you don't handle your own business. That is a terrible, terrible call. Glove to the face? Oh, he knows. Not to belabor the point too much, but it's really obvious the fielder's not going to catch this thing with ordinary effort, or even with extraordinary effort. It's over his head. I'm really surprised that the crew didn't overturn this call on consultation. We'll talk about getting the call right at a later time, but watch this. having a very lengthy protest, or anyway, as we can put it, a very angry conversation with the Did he see it? No? It happened really quickly, so let's rewind it and go over it again in slow motion. So the manager is having a conversation with the umpires. That is absolutely fine. That's standard practice. But watch this. The umpire backs away. The umpires leave. They're done with the conversation. So, great. We've had about a three to four minute delay talking to this guy, and now we leave. Why are we coming back? We left. The conversation was over. Close the door. At some point, this game has to continue. Call's not getting reversed. It, it was definitely too late of a call. We haven't seen anything. Was that fan who threw the bottle? Don't have. Again, there's really no such thing as too late of an infield fly call. The ball didn't even hit the ground. He already called it. So by definition, by rule, it's not too late. I digress. This is about a minute or two later, I just cut ahead in the video. He's still talking to them. I get that the call was wrong, 
I get that it was really wrong. But now we need to turn to game management, because we clearly think we got the call right, even though we didn't, and we need to move on. Literally tearing off their What do you think the odds are of the manager actually citing the rule book? Might have helped his case if it he Oh, wait, here we go. Okay, now we're hearing a lot of boos coming from the stands. Yeah. And looks like now the argument's getting a little heated. Heated. Yeah. And so, you know, the manager went directly and he bumped the umpire. And he's going to be thrown out quickly. Yeah, I, I mean, let's be very clear. If a manager bumps an umpire, if a manager pushes his way through other umpires attempting to keep him away from that first umpire, that manager shouldn't be warned. The stop sign is completely the wrong reaction. That manager should be immediately ejected from the game. There is zero tolerance for physical abuse. And do you need a rule citation for that? I'll be glad to give you one. Or actually, my friend Odo from Star Trek will be glad to give you the rule citation. You stole the run from us. You stole it just as if you reached up and tore off the scoreboard. You stole it from us. You. You're out of here! What? No player shall at any time make contact with the umpire in any manner. The prescribed penalty for the violation is immediate ejection from the game. Rule number 4.06, subsection A, paragraph 4. Look it up, but do it in the stands. You're gone! I think... Uh, he went directly to the umpire who made the call. The fact that this manager is still out there in the game is, on its own, pretty representative of what's going on. The umpire who made the call, by the way, was demoted after this, and I have to think that the demotion was not based on the call alone, but the response to the manager afterward. Considering that he physically... You, you get the idea. Scoring... Uh, I also do believe that it's time for the umpires to to make it a swift uh, procedure here, right here, you know, to try to, well, he's been, I mean, the manager's been on, on the field for like, what, maybe five minutes already, and no matter how the uh, the call is going to be returned or, or I mean, to, to be overturned or not, obviously I don't think they will be overturning that call. They need to get this thing go on as fast as possible. They're, they're not going to overturn it because yeah. if they do, we'll just continue well, having arguments, but with manager Hong yeah. Yijong, right? <laughs> um, so, Mike Lowry. There you have it. The call is not changing. The manager likely wants to be tossed. Sometimes managers want to get tossed if they think the call is so bad that they have to get thrown out for it. So throw them out. Don't let them assault you, though. Um, you know, Zhang Jian. 